Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Magically Cruising, the cruise podcast where we share our personal cruise tips and reviews to help you make the most out of your next sailing. My name's Kira, and I'm an independent travel agent specializing in all things cruise, Disney, and North America, and I'm joined by my fellow co host. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I write over at Cruising for All, Cruising with Kids and Mini Travelers. And this week, we are once again joined by a very special guest who we love having on the podcast. Laura, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hello, thanks for having me back. Um, I'm Laura, I'm from Cruise Lifestyle. And this week, Laura has kind of come on and she's going to share a little bit of information with us about her time when she was sailing on Celebrity Edge. Uh, it was, by the time this episode comes out anyway, it was last summer. Um, so you sailed summer, was it summer 23 you sailed? Yes. In June. Okay. And do you want to just tell the guys a little bit about which itinerary you did, I guess, as the starting point? Yeah, so we did um, Celebrity Edge uh, in mid-June. Um, it was a week and it was from Chippewa to Barcelona. So we did uh, Spain and Italy. Nice. And I think a bit of France. Corsica's France, isn't it? Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Cannes is France as well. Yeah, so Spain, Italy and France. <laughs> It was a while ago. Oh, you do lose the days, don't you, when you're seeing the wake up. And was that your first celebrity crew? Yeah. Doing that little med loop, sorry, quickly, is, is one of my favourite things about it, though, of having access like Barcelona, Rome, Italy, France. You can kind of do a lot of those like three countries on a, on a good circle. And so in a seven night sailing, you can. And it's a, it's not that they're quite samey, samey, but I do feel like, like the Mediterranean ports have got a very similar vibe to them. So sometimes it can be a bit difficult to always kind of go, especially with Corsica as well. To kind of go like, is it the French side of Corsica or is it the Italian side of Corsica? It, it kind of does. It does blur, and we struggled when we did our med sailings with Virgin of just kind of like, are we in Spain, France, or Italy today? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because you've got the the Italian and French Riviera, yeah, haven't right. you? That they're they're both very close together. So that's that's one good thing is that you can hit quite a few different places in in that week. Um, three different countries in a week so yeah it is it's quite nice and it's and it, those the ports that we did uh, were nice and easy they were walkable ports you didn't have to book excursions necessarily um, so that made it quite a nice relaxing week and we just did as much as more li- or as little as we wanted really so it was my first celebrity cruise I think that you were saying oh, yeah, you asked yeah. me, didn't you yep go on so it was your first and what was your initial what was your expectation what was your initial thoughts so uh, funnily enough celebrity edge was the only was the sh- the ship that i well i didn't meet you on it sarah but i met you the night before do you yes. remember we were on that clear conference yes. and we had a we had a, a ship tour of celebrity edge and literally that was the only celebrity ship that i'd been on and i was i was impressed but i kind of then didn't do anything about it um I was kind of a little bit like, oh, I don't know, like the inside spaces are a bit dark and I kind of like left it for a bit. And then when I noticed that the Celebrity Edge was going to be in the Mediterranean, I thought, well, actually, now might be a good time to try it. So I was pleasantly surprised. I think I've, I mean, I've said it on social media and things. I think Celebrity could be my next favorite cruise line. Mm. <laughs> I think it's just got so much going for it, hasn't it? It's like a, a grown-up Royal Caribbean almost. In fact, I always go back to it, don't I? Sorry. But <laughs> that's what <laughs> no it feels like to me. we take you away from Royal. <laughs> I always go back. <laughs> I think being part of that, um, that whole brand um, with Royal Caribbean, the infrastructure yeah. and the way that things are organised are loads better than other cruise lines. Mm. Just think the things are made far simpler. Like yep. just the embarkation process, oh. getting everything done in advance. It just makes things mm-hmm. so much smoother than, you know, some other cruise lines where it's a it's a hassle, it's a battle, it's there is something to be said about the fact that it has got that sister brand mm-hmm. being like with all that set up and just having those systems in place. They've nailed though, like embarkation, disembarkation, and they like having Look. destination gateway as well. So kind of that um, when you're leaving as well, and you go into that lovely lobby lounge area. The fact that something as simple as getting off the ship each day in your port is also an elevated experience. It's not just kind of like go to some back corridor, some elevator at the after the ship type of thing, and walk the gangway. There's this whole lovely airy you know, arrivals and um, area that they've kind of set up. And I know Royal do it as well on some of the Oasis class ships. And that that just sets the standard, I think, for kind of your expectations of when you're kind of entering in this lovely lobby area and you're kind of going off for the day to explore it and it's its own little arrivals lounge. And I know they use that space during the daytime for like events and pop-ups when they're at sea. 
But I think just small touches like that with Royal just mean that it's, as you say, elevated. They do this whole thing so much better than a lot of other cruise lines who have been doing this equally at the same amount of time as Royal and Celebrity as well. Yeah, definitely. One thing I noticed um, that we, we, me and Craig both noticed was just, firstly, the amount of staff that mm. were on board. Like they didn't have a staffing issue on Celebrity Edge. And from speaking to crew, doesn't seem to be the case across the fleet. They seem to be, you know, um, not struggling to get crew, um, which is always a good thing. But also just ha- just how friendly they all were. It was like, it, it, like they had the time. That might ha- be because the fact that they are, you know, fully staffed. They've got the time to stop and ask how your day's been and see, you know, what you've been up to or make a suggestion or whatever. But that was something that made a big impact, I think, on our crews is that the the crew yeah. were so nice mm. and so friendly and helpful. So what cabin did you book? So we <laughs> we looked at the infinite veranda and then we looked at all the reviews and I was a bit like, hmm no not this time although it is going to be next time um but so we decided to go for a traditional veranda so the one with like the like the porthole type opening Uh so it's it's like a normal balcony but it had it was shaped um so that i suppose it was slightly obstructed um those are positioned at the back of the ship or the ones the most the ones that we were in they were at the back and unfortunately we had the window washer machine right outside our Oh. Um, balcony for most of it because it was where like it was kept so you could have like you had a great view kind of like straight out in front and then towards the front of the ship but was slightly obstructed towards the aft so but it didn't affect it didn't affect us at all and the position of where we were it wasn't affected like in terms of like movement on the ship we didn't have any issues in the Mediterranean you don't so um yeah it was nice it was a big cabin what deck were you on I think we we're on deck eight right and then could you Sit on the balcony, and you know, like if you were sat on the chair, have you still got a view, or have you got, you know, what I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You still had a view, right? Yeah, because of it being a porthole. Yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah. We, we, so you could still look out. You could still sit out and look out. Um, we were kind of we looked when you looked down, you could see um the outside area of Eden. Oh, right. But we were on the opposite side to the smoking area. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So uh, outside Eden. Outside Eden at the back, um, on port side is the smoking area. We were on starboard side. So. Right. So we're the little cafe. I forgot. Cafe. I think it's just literally Cafe Eden, isn't it? It's where the cafe area yeah. is on the side. You're just above that. Yeah. yeah. We were directly above that, a few okay. decks up. Right. Yeah. Lucky side of the ship because, as you say, yeah, the other side that is the smoking sure. area. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've never thought of that. We've yeah, we were been... lucky. We were lucky because we found out about that afterwards. Right. It's a small bugbear of mine when like cruise ships for smoking areas low down because then, as you say, it has a higher chance of the smoke being able to travel up the ship, particularly if you're a balcony user as well. So it is a, a knowledge choice. I get why they do it because then obviously if you are enjoying eating in the evenings, it's the nearest place to go out and smoke type of thing other than other night you've got to go up and up to the top deck. and that type of stuff. So I get from a convenience if you are a smoker, but yeah, if you're a cabin, a balcony, and I guess during the daytime, maybe people aren't using Eden as much because it's more of a relaxing, quiet space. So probably sort of in the evenings, you'd probably get a lot of people out there smoking yeah. if they're drinking. But it is. It's always a choice on a few cruise lines where they put smoking areas towards the back of the ship and kind of low down. It always yeah, it's a choice, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, we didn't know about that until after we've booked it. So we were just lucky that we'd there was a... I mean, I don't think, I think when we booked it, there wasn't that many choices a cabin left. So it was, w- was what was left. Um, and all of those types of cabins were at the back anyway. So um, that was that was just luck that we ended up on that side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. More, than, more than judgment. And what about the cabin itself? Cabin was really nice. Um, I would say that the, I mean, uh, and I would say it, it, when you were talking about comparing it to Royal, the the balcony cabin was a similar size to the balcony cabin that we had on Spectrum of the Seas. It was a good size. There was a you know a room for a settee as well. I mean, on other cruise lines, that would be a mini suite. So I mean, the standard balcony size is 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 good. Bathroom was really nice. Plenty of space. The only thing really, I suppose, there was a couple of things. The the 
I mean, we were there for a week, so we didn't have loads of clothes. Um, storage was probably a little bit tight, but we managed really? it. And then the other thing, I don't know what you've thought about um, those boxes with the plugs. The power boxes. It's supposed to be like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The way, the way you're supposed to put, like, plug all your things in and then close the box and it's all neat and tidy. Yeah. But they. It was kind of a bit of a weird one because you can't re- you can't fit a plug in there. No, I don't think it's designed for British plugs because I couldn't plug a single thing in. Like, and I'm a bit of a geek, so I take my Nintendo Switch. I've got my iPad, my laptop. Not a single one of my plugs would comfortably fit in that box and be able to close the lid. Um, I think if you've got like maybe American pl- plug sockets and you've got um, European ones, uh, okay. possibly. But definitely, I don't think I, I was able to plug in a single plug other than my phone charger. And again. It depends. We're obviously travel, you know, I'm a travel agent. You guys are travel writers, bloggers, vloggers. We're taking probably a lot more equipment and AV and technical stuff than maybe the typical customer who will probably take like an e-reader, tablet, mobile phone, I, I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, it, it looks lovely and it's a great concept, but I don't think it's, it doesn't suit everyone, does it? It's a bit of an odd shape for sticking in no, UK plugs. when I was like... When I was looking at um, the, the cabins before, like we, when we were trying to decide which cabin we had, and these, they kept saying about these boxes, about these, like, oh, they're so wonderful. And then, <laughs> and then when we got it, we're like, oh, <laughs> Does, can only fit like two plugs in because you have to yeah. then make, leave a huge space in between to fit the plugs in. So there is, isn't there? Like, on their us, official like, cabin yeah. tours, it's like a good minute talking about Kelly Hopper and how she's designed this box and how lovely. <laughs> and you're like, so you Where get really excited, box? like, oh, it's the famous box. <laughs> Where is it? And how how big is it? What? Help me envisage it. It's on the desk. Right. So um, it's kind of at the back of the desk. It's a white box um, with a lid. And inside, when you lift it up, there's um, a, a bank of uh, plug sockets so that you can plug them in. And then there's like little holes in the box that you feed your wires through. So the idea is is that you plug it in, you feed your wire, wire through, oh. and then literally you can just have your wire hanging out of the box and plug your device in. Right. But it just, it, it was it, for UK, like Kieran said, UK plugs, mm. it, it it didn't fit as many as... Is Kelly Hopper not British? Yeah. It, it, I think it was only ever really designed for mobile phones and things like that. But if you're trying to do a laptop and you're plugging in a laptop with a big power brick, right? That yeah. like particularly with a Mac, where the Mac power brick is so chunky, oh. that my, my one, and I've got a MacBook Pro, so my power brick is about as big as they come. I cannot physically fit mine in to the box, basically. Right. So again, it's a niche work case problem if my mobile phone charger wasn't that much of a problem but it's the again again this is such a nerdy topic like why are we like this on this podcast but like <laughs> when you've got british plugs because our cables right. don't go straight up all the time they go out to the side so again when you're putting the plugs in the cable then gets stuck on the side of the box type of thing so it's just right it's a bit cumbersome type of thing i think the, the concept's wonderful and it looks lovely if you could fit everything in it, it keeps your desk nice and neat but it's just not fit for the typical British plug, particularly like power right. bricks and things like that for laptop. I think it's little things with me because when I was on the podcast last time, I was talking to you about toilet doors that opened on their own. And that was the, like one of the best features. This so, is the content I'm, we're here I'm for. Still with that. I'm, still I'm still with that. <laughs> I love those toilet doors. <laughs> and shower doors rather than curtains. That would go on curtains. It was just quickly yeah. though, while I edited out a 20 minute conversation we had about gators in Florida and Miami, we, we literally had a 20 minute conversation about gators. <laughs> And I was like, no, I can leave it in. And then I realised it's about twenty minutes long, and it's not. It's not in the episode in the end. But yeah, tangents is is our specialty here. Yeah, yeah. So overall, the cabin was really nice. So Laura, what were your thoughts on the ship? I really like Celebrity Edge. Uh, I think it, well, it's not the biggest ship. Having been on Arvia the previous cruise to this, that was like five thousand. This was like pretty much half the size. Um, I think I prefer this size of ship. Um, yeah. And also the fact that there was plenty of space. So there was there's loads of space. Nowhere ever felt crowded. Um there was there was just there was just never any like bottlenecks. There was never anything that I felt like, oh my God, there's all these people, you know. Yeah. It, it didn't ever feel busy. And I really liked that about it. There was always somewhere around the pool. 
Um, there was always somewhere you could sit at a bar. You know, it, it just felt like there was less people on board. The ship itself is beautiful. I was like, which is how cruising should be because I think it's getting busier and busier, isn't it? So the fact that there's you've got space to sit, I think that's a real plus. Yeah, and not just like, oh, there's one seat left either. There's like... There was a choice of places, you know, it was it was that type of thing. There seemed just, it just seemed to be no hassle, like everything ran smoothly. There was, yeah, it just seemed easy. Like if you wanted to go and eat somewhere, you just went to the restaurant that you wanted to eat at. You didn't have to book on an app or anything in advance. You know, if you wanted something in particular, they would you know, sort it out. We had an issue with our um, the time we were going to disembark on the last day. I went down to customer services. Yeah, no problem. We'll sort it. Like it, there was nothing that ever seemed to be an issue, which made you feel like you could relax a lot more. I think that's probably the feeling that I got from it. That's amazing. It's something they pride themselves on. It's because it's like the, for the size of the ship that she is, the guest to crew ratio and the guest to space ratio is incredibly high as well. So other ships of the same size will have more guests on it and probably a, hand, a less crew type of thing. So you get an abundance of space per passenger, I think, with Celebrity, especially the Edge series of ships. Um, but then as you say that as well, the variety of spaces as well. So even though you've got the pool deck, if you're not somebody who wants to sit by the pool, you've got Eden, you've got the outdoor space by Eden, you've obviously got the loose promenade area, you've got the rooftop garden, you've got the sunset bar. There's loads of spaces for you to spread out and sit in the sun rather than it being the pool is the outdoor area. That's the only place if you want to sit in the sun. Yeah. There's an abundance yeah. of space to kind of go. And for us, Eden was one of our favorite spaces to kind of just sit and look at the after the ship. So we still have that beautiful connection to the outside. We could sit inside but still look outside type of thing we never felt like we were in the dark of the ship type of thing where some ships their lounges you could feel a little bit like you're in a dark cave somewhere um i think you've just got an abundance of choice whether you want to dine snack relax lounge wind up wind down there's so many places to kind of just go and find a little quiet corner or go find a little bit of activity i think celebrity do a great job of creating multiple spaces for everyone just to kind of spread out and move around we gravitated um to certain places during the cruise i mean we were only on there for a week so you know we weren't on there for a massive amount of time but we would gravitate towards the sunset bar kind of like mid to late afternoon onwards having a drink there was really really nice you know just sat on those comfy seats looking out at either the wake or the port whatever um and like you said eden as well we really like that in the evenings we would go to eden we did go to eden for sail away on one of the uh, uh, one of the ports and it was really quiet there's like it's as if the people don't realize that there's those outward facing seats at the back and so we were just sat there and, they are a bit of a hidden gem in there yeah so we really we like those two spaces in particular the rooftop garden was nice it was quite hot on our cruise, so to sit out up there for long periods of time was a bit tricky. But they did have a Latin dance party one evening. I don't know if that's a celebrity thing or whether that was because we were in the med. I don't know. But I really liked that, and we went up there for that in the evening one evening. And, um, yeah, I just liked it. I liked the vibe. I'd like to try more celebrity, probably, for based on my experience. A lot of people like the other classes. So I wouldn't be opposed to trying different classes of celebrity ships. A lot of people have particular favourite, but I do like the, ed the edge and hoping that maybe when I go on Ascent next year that, you know, there'll be, it'll be all those things that they've kind of honed and changed and improved from all the other edge class ships on Ascent. So we shall see. So... When you sailed, was it in term time or was it out of term time or the holidays? It was in term time, so it right. was it was mid it was mid June, right? So it was a bit quiet. So um, there was in terms of passengers, yeah. In terms of passengers, there was um, definitely some British because we spoke to um, quite a few. There was people from the US, and there seemed to be quite a few Spanish on board as well. So I'd say nationality-wise, those were the ones of, of people that we spoke to. Um, those were where people were coming from for those cruises. And I think that's the best ones where you've got a really good mix of nationalities. I much, much prefer it than just a big chunk of the same. 
I think that cross section is just interesting, more chilled. I really enjoy that. I like it. We we, we like it. Yeah. It's going out of Barcelona, isn't it? It's, um, it's just got a massive bonus to it to, to do that. Oh, did you go out of Bar- Barcelona on this one? No, we went out of uh, Chiba oh, right, And I Fold. think probably yeah. that is also a draw for people coming from the US. Yes, yeah. So if people are coming from the US, they can fly in and they can um, see Rome beforehand, which is is a popular option, isn't it? So that's possibly why as well that there was there was quite a few we we met. So we we were in Rome for three four days before the cruise, and then we took a, a shared shuttle, like a mini bus, to the port, and we um, shared it with a couple from England. And then a young couple from the US and this, that was, they hadn't just got married, but they, they were classing it as their honeymoon. Nice. So, so how did you do that then? Was It, it was um, just independently. So what, through like a Facebook group or how did you meet them to book that? We didn't meet them beforehand and we didn't know who would be on our shuttle. So oh, right. we've done it both times we've stayed in Rome we then have had to get to the port. And so we've just found a, a, a company that do it and they will sell seats on a shuttle. Um, so there's usually about six people, six to eight people, and, and everyone pays X amount. It's a right. lot cheaper than a taxi. You have got the yeah. option of a train. Mm. But we were... It's quite a long way, the Winnix. It goes out and around and about, doesn't it? We were unsure about how we would how easy it would be to get from the train station in Chivacavacchia to the port and how much of a hassle it would be. Ah. And actually, the shuttle isn't a bad price. So for them to pick you up literally from your outside your hotel and take you straight to the terminal, it seemed like a good idea. Then it's always worked for us. I found a really good company that do something like that. They they pick you up and you do the shared shuttle, shuttle transfer. But they also post cruise as well. If you're staying in Rome or maybe you wanted, if you've got like an evening flight, they will actually hold onto your suitcases for you and take them to the airport. I'm desperately trying to get a contract with them so we can add them onto our packages, but they were the cheapest by far that I could find out of anybody. So anybody who's booked with me to go to Rome next year, I've recommended them, but there are some great supplies out there. But yeah, it does feel like getting from Rome to um, Giuseppe the port feels like there's a few challenges because there's not many main, as from the research I was doing for customers anyway, there's not many kind of main transport routes to get you back and forth. You're either looking at shuttle transfers or a bit of a trek to kind of do it on public transport from what I was looking into it for anyway. Well, I think ours cost 280 euros return because we booked a private one. But obviously there was four of us. But I mean, what does that compare to the shuttle? So we paid, I mean, we only paid one way because we um, we were cruising from Chivijavecchia and then we were, cru- when then we were disembarking in Barcelona. So we didn't do the return, but for the single journey, I think it was about between 70 and 80 euros oh, per out. couple. Right. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's probably similar then, is it? It's 160 to a little bit. It sounds up. like it's probably going to be similar. It yeah. is, but it's one of those, isn't it? Pri- because there was four of you, your transfer went further, isn't it? But yeah. then if there's just the two of you taking a private transfer, then you're yeah. paying the 200 euro yeah. for the two of you. So Do you know what, then. though? It was worth every penny because Jack and Joe on a yeah. train with suitcases would have made my life a misery. And I'm just, I'm just not doing it. It had been so miserable. <laughs> so Termini Station in Rome as well doesn't feel like a safe place either. Does it not? Like, really? It, it does, just doesn't feel like you want to be hanging around there too long. It feels like you don't want to not know where you're going because you could, you know, if you're dawdling and not sure where you're going and stuff like that, you're like prime for pickpockets and things like that. So we didn't decide to do terminate to Chiva for that reason because well because a we thought it's probably gonna be quite a lot of hassle with suitcases getting on and off and then getting from the yeah. train station to the port but also us really not knowing where we are and it being such a huge Massive. train station it's I, I mean we went in to get some tickets one day and it is it's huge and we didn't see hardly any of it we when we were there we were with Donna and Darren and the kids were all little and we'd done the day trip and just got on the train, so it was nothing to go on the train. Walked up, got it, got back in. We were stopping in Rome, but I remember when we was in the actual thing. You think it reminded me a bit of the Bronx train station, you know, like the the underground in America. That's what it reminded me of. It was 
and it's massive and we nearly missed our train because it took us 10 minutes to get in the train station to our train back to to Chewbacca. So you've got to be really organised with it. But yeah, we thought, I'm not doing that with Jack and Joe. There's no way. So it's worth the shuttle. No, probably best. Yeah. Most easy. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'd recommend it. Definitely. It's just, it's just easy. Yeah. You know, it, it, it takes you straight mm. there. The specialty dining, because I know that you like that. Did you do any on this ship? We did. We, so we only had a week. So I was just trying to work out how I could fit things in. So <laughs> there are... <laughs> There's a lot of speciality restaurants as well, and we kept finding new ones as well as we were walking around the ship. And I was like, oh, it's another one. <laughs> so my plan was, is I wanted to eat in um, each of the four main dining rooms. We managed three out of the four. Um, but those in themselves, because they've got like a separate little menu oh. that is only available in that menu. So like the Cyprus one has got Mediterranean dishes, isn't it, that's only available from that menu. So they kind of almost felt like mini specialty dining restaurants kind of um and so we ate in three of those um and then we did i think on the second night we did le petit chef nice and then we did later on in the cruise we did eden Mm. two places i want to do and we never got the chance to do so what are your thoughts on them ah so le Le petit chef everyone says it's like a bit it was a bit they said that everyone beforehand was saying, Oh, it's a bit gimmicky and I was like, Well, I'm gonna go for the experience, like it mm. looks really cool and, and it is. It I mean, the table just like comes to life and it's everyone kind of watches it all at the same time. It's it's projected down onto your table, but the quality and the colours are all really good and and then at the end of the animation you're first dish arrives and I was kind of going on the idea that well probably the main the best thing about it is going to be the animation and like the food is going to be okay but it's probably going to be like second to the animation but I was really surprised in that the food I was surprised at the how good the food was because I thought well actually it is more about the experience than the food but I think they were on par I think the, the food was really really good so from what i'm from what i gather there's two menus so you could in effect right. do it twice on a cruise or you could do like one menu on one cruise and then you could choose the other so there's there's it's a set menu um but there's two different kind of animations depending on the the menu so you could in fact do it a couple of times if you wanted but really really clever we like that and there was some, there were families in there, but then equally there were just people who like yeah. us yeah. that were, were adults who wanted to to see it as well. And what is the animation? Because I've had it explained to me a bit, but just tell me the story. Is it because is there a story behind it? So in the run up to each dish, it it kind of taught the the little chef, the le, the le petit chef. I, I I'm trying to think. There was stuff about like the jungle, and he was like canoeing through the jungle and it was something to do with where the produce was from um for the dishes that he was making and he kind of puts it all together on the on the plate that is projected down and then all the ingredients come together and that's when you're served your your dish so the animation relates to the dishes that you're given and kind of like the provenance of them and then he's, he's just, he sings and Come on. does all sorts of different things. That's quite, quite funny. So yeah, I would say definitely so if you want to do it, at least do it once. And what about Eden? What was your thoughts on Eden? And what's, what sort of restaurant is that? What's that based about? So Eden is, um, with the Eden restaurant is, is within Eden at the back of the ship. You've got these huge, great windows the there's two menus that you can choose from so there's like a tasting menu which is a ridiculous amount of um courses or there's like um just your standard menu where you can where you can pick um what you want off that so we couldn't eat like nine courses or whatever it was so we went for um just picked what we wanted considering everyone said how you have to do eden maybe i built it up to be more than it was i don't know Really? Yeah. Because I'm trying to work out where it fits in like the hierarchy of dining. Or is it the top tier? Because the way that it's sold to us, at least to, to, to say to customers, it is like the 
the kind of um, high end, high end, I guess, but the top level experiential dining thing and the fuse really high end and, and high concept type of thing. Um, but then I guess it's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? Really, of what you enjoy. You can go to like the, the grill, the place that's by the, the, the rooftop garden. You can have a really amazing gourmet burger and that could be your dream meal type of thing. So it's, I guess it's very subjective, isn't it? Whether you like that kind of concept food. It is. Food definitely is. Um, it was, it was all nicely presented. I will say that is that it all looked lovely when it arrived on the plate. We, um, there was a bit of a weird situation as well in that we were we when we booked the table we'd booked it for just after sail away and when we got there they we were lucky enough that they'd allocated us a, a table right next to the window nice. so we had like the wake view and we were just leaving I think we were leaving Cannes maybe and um and we were le- like just looking out the window and then all of a sudden the blinds come down and we're like oh my goodness like we've got a window see finally they <laughs> put the blinds down and apparently someone behind the light the light was in his eye no. so um we had the blind down for a little bit and then when the sun kind of moved or we moved they brought the the blinds up again so we had we had a lovely view but yeah <laughs> i was a bit gutted at that point i was thinking oh I was so looking. I was. I was, I was having a lovely time looking out, and now you pulled the blind out. So can't you wear sunglasses? <laughs> I'm using it a display kitchen. Um, so we saw the food kind of cooked. The chef, you could see the chefs preparing the food, isn't it? It's one of those you can see the before. There's like theatre food as well as yeah. obviously high, good food. You can look in and you can see them kind of working in the kitchen. Yeah, definitely. It's a quite a big venue, and the other thing that you've got is because it's Eden is split level. You've got um, some of like the music coming over from the the lounge area a bit. And when we were there, there was a, a acoustic guitarist and uh, a singer, so that was quite nice. You had a bit of that coming through, so there was a bit of an atmosphere as well. So, but yeah, maybe I just built it up to be more than it was. It was nice, and I would possibly go again. There's others that I would like to try now, I think. Roar on 5 was the one that I had my heart set on doing on board Celebrity, and particularly on the Magic Carpet as well, when that's kind of at that, the, the right hype for Roar on 5. I just don't trust myself with an a la carte menu and speciality dining, especially sushi, because I don't know when to say no, especially with sushi. So I think I would have come off with a mortgage worth of sushi type of thing, but they have some fantastic speciality on board. You have to eat a lot of sushi as well to fill yourself up. Yeah, and I don't struggle with doing that. That's the problem. And I'm all very merry, glass of wine deep. Like, yeah, bring it on. Let's have another one. Oh, who fancies more? And then you get the bill and you're like... <laughs> and I can't dine a dash of a cruise ship, can you? Not that I've ever done it for the record, but you can't dine a dash of a cruise ship type of thing. So. We had booked um, lunch on for Raw on 5 one day, but um, Craig was feeling under the weather. And so actually eating sushi probably yeah. wasn't the best idea when when that's the case. So they were really good. I popped her down. I said, oh, sorry, we're going to have to cancel. And they said, yeah, no problem. Not, not problem at all. It was, you know, it was it, again, it was just those things where it, it wasn't like a battle. Like I explained and they said, yes, not a problem. Um, but yeah, that was one that I, I quite fancy trying the, all the, the sushi and the, the seafood because that's something I really enjoy. Um, just a question then on the packages you had as well, because did you book it with the all included? Because it was obviously it was different back then as well. And then that's the first question. And then the second question is, is that, did you keep to the standard all included or did you upgrade to the premium version? So we had the all, all in, what's it called? Always all included. included or all included? Yeah, all included. We had the all included package. Um, we were tempted when we first got on to upgrade but then actually we decided to, to stick with what we had. And one thing that we struggled was finding kind of a list of drinks that were yep. on the standard classic yep. package. Um, but what was good is that if there was ever a drink that we wanted, say a cocktail, the bartender or the wait staff would notice that we were on the standard and say oh you're on the standard we will do this like the yes. classic version of that drink so although we didn't really have a list or a menu of drinks that we could like go through and choose whatever we wanted like we'd say oh that looks quite nice what's that 
um, if someone ne- nearby is drinking, they 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 would give us the the classic version so that it stayed within our package, which I thought was really yeah. really nice. I'm glad you said it because that was my observation as well when we did it. Of I got initially frustrated because you open up this beautiful martini menu type of thing, and there's not a single men- martini in the martini bar menu choice that fits within the classic package. <laughs> But as you say, if you then just speak to the waiters and say, I fancy this, or what can you do with this, then they're very accommodating at that point. But it is a bit of a weird experience, isn't it? And I did get a little bit frustrated at one point of like, I just like to peruse a menu. I'd like to be excited by my drinks. And yeah, I noticed that with every yeah. venue, Eden, Sunset Bar, uh, Martini Bar, every venue, there's not a list of, oh, you're in the classic pack, or oh, you're the standard all included. These are all the within your price pr- um, bracket. And I know you can just pay separately and all that type of stuff, but it was a matter of principle of it's just a bit of a weird frustration I had, but it's just something to be aware yeah. of with um, celebrity that, yeah, you're not going to get the standard, like MSC and Royal, that, well, Royal don't have it, but some MSC, for example, will have, these are the Easy Plus drinks, these are the Easy drinks, and these are the Premium drinks, and you've got three different menus, there's none of that on celebrity. <laughs> it's If you don't, it's either a la carte or upgrades if you want to shop from the menus. Yeah, very, very few menus around, mm. like even just like you just had to rely really on what you have liked previously yes. or like like I said before, seeing what other people are drinking and asking, oh, what's that? And saying, you know, can I have one of those? One thing that they did do if, um, a few days when we were sat around the pool in the afternoon is that they would make up um, a tray of a co- one particular cocktail. Okay. And they would go around and say, would, would you like this? It's a whatever, a something, something mojito or watermelon mojito or something. And they would just make a huge tray of it. And it was included in the standard package. So you knew that you could say, yes, I'll have one. And it was just ones that they, they kind of brought around. And, and it was just, it was, it was different to what maybe we'd had during that day it was like a different cocktail so that was quite nice oh i didn't struggle to get drunk like i, I think i didn't struggle to get drunk and i drank <laughs> very well and it's all premium spirit so i'm not knocking the offering but it's just a, one of those weird observations i made when you sat down the martini bar going oh let's have a martini and every single one of them is priced above the standard package is that the case on all celebrity ships then i've only been on I've only sailed at least anywhere on Apex. I haven't been on any of the other classes of ships, but I would imagine it would probably be similar. Like you say, they can adapt it totally. If you ask for a martini or if you ask for a Cosmo, they will make you one. So it's just that initial, I think, understanding that that's how it works concept, really. It's not that you can't have any cocktails. It's not like there are no cocktails available to you. It's just the menu doesn't list cocktails that are in the classic package. You do have to ask for them. Is it not all by price, though? Because when I was on, it was by price. Yeah, no, that, that, that's that's what I mean. Like the price that they list, every cocktail is priced above the standard price for what's included. Yeah, but I think because I drink wine probably, I notice it less. I don't really have many cocktails. But at the martini bar, I'd, I'd, I'd just pay the extra $2 if I wanted that cocktail. And they just added that $2 on. Can you still do that? Yes. So I think, yeah, so that happened to us um, on the first day when we... Um, got on and we made our way towards the sunset bar and I think maybe one like the first one or two drinks that we had um we had the premium versions of it not and not realizing so we had like two dollars four dollars on our account and that was just from that first day but as soon as the staff the crew knew that we were on the um the classic drinks package they were really good and they just adapted it so that there wasn't that charge yeah, because I think the only time I would have drunk cocktails is at the pool, which your pina coladas are always included, aren't they? And your, your classic cocktails. And then at the martini bar where I just paid extra. Because I just, I don't think that was a thing that they would give you that version when I went on. But being a wine drinker, obviously, that's always in the package. No, it was, ours, ours was a unique one because obviously we were on a four day, we were only on for the first four days of an 11 night sailing. So we didn't want to pay to upgrade the drinks package for the whole duration because we wouldn't have benefited. Um, so ours is a bit of a unique use case. And me and Phil are cocktail snobs. We, not snobs, but we love cocktails. So I think we would probably, if we were on for a full sailing, pay to upgrade it just because we would love to be able to explore and dine around all the different cocktails. So ours is a bit of a unique frustration for us. So just all these wonderful cocktails and you're just kind of looking at it and going, damn it. Um, but no, I, I, you know, we, I got very drunk on <laughs> so celebrity and had a hangover for a good two days. <laughs> so... I did well by the tricks on you, don't get me wrong. 
My goodness, that is a big hangover. <laughs> I tell you what, if you like cocktails, then Kieran, uh, the cocktail menu in the Eden restaurant was very different, high end. You know, you're talking like I don't know twenty odd dollars for a cocktail. Yeah, that's me and Phil. We'd be there all night. Well, we did. We spent a lot of it time. Comes in a plant pot. Yeah, that's my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we 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 determined to get back on celebrity soon, um, and I think then we'll probably indulge a lot more in it because it'll be a proper sailing. Whereas this was a training conference, and again, lu- luxuries of being a TA and a conference on a cruise ship. Um, but we just didn't want to upgrade our drinks package because we wouldn't have benefited for the time we were on board. Um, one question I've got then is, what do you think of the entertainment on board Celebrity? So entertainment wise, most of the time, the only entertainment we really saw was in the theatre. There was, like I said, there was some some music, some live music in Eden, but it was, you know, someone singing, someone playing a guitar. Um, there wasn't the like like the performances and the Eden performers. Um, we didn't see any of that. I don't know if it was on our sailing or whether we just missed it. But the the theatre, I like the design of the theatre because it's almost it's almost in the round, isn't it? It's like a horseshoe shape. They've got the big, huge screens that are incorporated into the performances um, as a spectacle. And we really like that. Um, we didn't really follow. We watched two, three shows. We didn't really follow what was happening. There was some pretty <laughs> lights and then there were some people dangling from silks and things which were quite impressive one thing that was um quite funny to watch was there was um there was just like a constant stream of people coming in and out of the theater really? it, it, it was it was something where people would um kind of come in they'd they'd watch it for a bit and maybe they'd then leave or there would be people then that were just coming in throughout like the whole performance even like 10 minutes before the end there was people still coming in finding a seat and sitting down so uh, that was that was strange that's something that i haven't experienced as much on other cruise lines um there was one show we did stay and watch for a little bit that was um it was kind of a game show but with some of the the crew on board so there was the captain um the cruise director and it was kind of um like a a version of would i lie to you you know the um the tv show so i think People generally quite enjoyed that. We watched it for a bit and then wandered off. So we were one of those. We were some of those people that then wandered off as well. I quite liked the theatre. It was a good size. Wherever you sat, you could see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was good. You know, you weren't. It was it was tiered enough. We we sat on both levels. We sat on the on the ground on the first time, and then we sat higher up on the second just to see what the difference was. And but other than that. Entertainment around the ship was very, very subtle. There wasn't anything that was majorly in your face. Um, you've got the martini bar performance. Did you watch the Chandelier um, show with like and the flaring? Yeah, yeah. So we we caught that one night, which was which was good fun. Um, but yeah, no, didn't get to see any of the Eden performers, which um, was a bit of a shame. That might just been our timing. I slept through it because I wasn't I was hungover. Um so Phil watched it, the Eden show on Apex at least anyway. So I'm assuming it's a similar concept, but it's, he explained it. It's very much like a cabaret esque show. And it, they obviously changed the theme, don't they? So he said it was around the seasons. Um so they went through the different seasons and they had like musical performers, they had um singers and they had aerial acts doing different things throughout it. So he said it was more like a kind of cabaret style rather than a full on production number. But he said, like, the quality of the performers, and you know this, Sarah, from Royal as well, don't you? The quality of the entertainment, the acts they get on board, you can't beat them in the industry. Like, if, whether you enjoy the concept shows, and I do think Celebrity is a little bit more high concept than maybe Royal, where Royal's a bit more kind of entry level. You can understand a story, and there's a bit more kind of, you know, to and flow, and a bit more of a, like, middle beginning, middle, and end. Celebrity is more spectacle and wonder, and it's a little bit kind of um, high thinking theatre. Is how I kind of look at the show I saw, at least anyway, on Celebrity. Wonderful, I thoroughly loved That's it. That's probably why I didn't get it. But yeah, I was sat there a little bit, kind of go in. I think I'd be paying a lot of money to go watch this in a very nice opera house somewhere. <laughs> is that is how yeah. I looked at it, type of thing. So we've only touched briefly on your cruise port. So which cruise ports did you stop at? So we went to Corsica. We were there on a Sunday, so that probably wasn't the best day to go, but that was just what it was. We had a wander around, the market was open. Um, we That was our first day. 
So we didn't have a sea day the first day. That Our first day was Corsica. So um, we had a bit of a lazy day and we had a look around. But because it was a Sunday, there wasn't much open. Um, then we went to Portofino. That was our first tenderbort. And that worked really, really well. I would say that, like you were saying about the destination gateway, we just when we 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 were always going to plan to go early anyway because these small ports like Portofino get very busy very quickly because you know the ferries come and the cruise ships come and then it 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 fills up so we always were planning to go early anyway but we literally wandered up to Raw on five we collected a tender ticket then they you know the announcements over the tannoy were saying you know now is a quiet time if you want to go go now um so we ha- literally just walked straight through and onto a, a tender and and had no issues at all portofino is lovely i went probably about 30 years ago when i was a child um so we had a, a nice wander around looked at all the fancy mega yachts and all the fancy shops that are in portofino and stopped and had a coffee and uh and got back on again so yeah just a nice place isn't it all the pretty um colored houses and and building it's it's a pretty pretty place to go oh we had a gelato as well that was our spending done for the day an orange juice and a gelato in Portofino. <laughs> <laughs> well apparently though celebrity edge series ships have the most expensive lifeboats in the mainstream cruise category they're apparently about a million dollars each each lifeboat so that's what they use for the tendering but they're meant to be gorgeous the seats are like plush like proper nice comfy such a nerd fact that I know. <laughs> it was funny because the crossing back from Portofino to the ship, um, I think just the the angle that the that they were coming back to the ship on meant that at one point we were going like down and up, oh. down and up. And and <laughs> it got to the stage where like there was a little hatch open um in the roof. And the pilot went down and up and literally all this water just came in through the hatch oh. and soaked him and then soaked everyone in oh. like the fr- front oh, row. My goodness. The but that was quite funny. We went there, so it was funny. We had that in Santorini as well. And I'm usually a pretty good sailor. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm fine. But even I was a bit like, grab hold of everything you can. This is a little bit too rough <laughs> for my tastes. Yeah. Yeah, with the other tent port we did was can. Again, it was it was a bit choppy, but then you're in a little little boat, aren't you? So you're going to feel it a bit more. Um, that was quite interesting. We um, we kind of had a wander around the old town. First of all, um, I found a a market um, and tried some food there. Um, they were all like wanting you to try all the different olives and things like that. So. We had free lunch at the market <laughs> and then we wandered through the shopping area and stopped and had um, a really expensive lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> That's you too. It was a fancy lemonade. There was mint and crushed ice and all that, um, which was very nice. And we did a bit of people watching there because it was kind of in a square and there was some kind of festival. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming probably most weeks there's some kind of film or media festival in Cannes not just the one big one every year so there was lots of people walking around with like lanyards looking very important on their phones so we watched them for a little bit and then we went down to the festival hall saw the the famous film festival steps and um and then wandered back looking at all the the yachts because we we like watching Below Deck I don't know about you but we like Below Deck so we were looking at all these yachts and uh and uh, and looking at all of the people that were on them, <laughs> and then and then we got back on and um and had lunch and had a like a lazy afternoon then, which was quite nice because I think people, you know, if you're coming from the US, you're going to make the most of these ports. So actually, the ship, I mean, like I yes, said before, yeah. it wasn't a busy ship anyway. Uh, but you know having that af- those afternoons on the ship was quite nice one well, it's, it's actually a really good observation to make actually that obviously for americans this is their bucket list holiday so they're coming over and they want to make the most out of their time in europe whereas for us we're very fortunate that we live quite close so you know i've sailed the med now i've done it three times last year type of thing and i've done two times the year before it's not that we're ungrateful but it's just it's a great opportunity of if you've been like i kind of said it, and it sounds like i've been snobbish it's not but there's only so many times you can go around a mediterranean port 
and shop because you know regardless of whether you're in spain france or italy there's a lot of similarities in the food the cuisine the culture that type of stuff so once you've got out and explored and had a couple of hours for us at least anyway where we're quite fortunate to do that culture quite frequently it's a great opportunity to get back and make the most out of the ship when a lot of the no. americans perhaps the core demographic for like royal and celebrity especially are generally out exploring they'll be off doing some amazing wine tour in the hills somewhere that we're probably going to go i've done wine tours in the hills in spain many times type of thing um so yeah for us at least anyway europeans doing the med is a great chance if you definitely want to kind of bed into these incredible ships a great time to do it yeah so we so the final port we only had one sea day on this cruise and then the final um port was palma and we decided to stay on the ship for that for that day so we had a sea day and then we had palma so we had two sea days in effect um and the people who were still on the ship, they were all British. Yep. Yeah. Because they've been to Mallorca, you know, how many times? So that you're right. There was that that kind of observation in that because we are so close to these places and we might have done land holidays to these places before, then, you know, um, and the chances are we're going to, these ports are going to come up again, aren't they? So. If the flip side of it is, is we look at the Caribbeans the opposite way around for us. So a lot of Americans, the Caribbeans, they're bread and butter. They're like, oh, I've been here. I've been here before type of thing. I'm going to pop off for a couple of hours, go to my favorite bar, come back. Whereas we're like, no, no, I'm going to go everywhere. <laughs> You're going to see everything. I don't get to see this every day type of thing. So just one of those cultural observations, isn't it, of how we tour those two different regions very differently. So the so the other port that we went to, we'd uh, the, the beauty of it was that we um, had been like the month before so it was La Spezia. And I'd spoken to you before on the previous podcast. It was like my our favorite place. Um, so we, again, La Spezia is, I suppose, a port where people from um, further afield might want to go to Florence yeah. um, or Pisa. Um, whereas we went to Cinque Terre. Um, we did half the villages in May and then we came back and did um, another two in June. So that was a really nice nice port that was really our only kind of port where we had something like a plan of action is that what that's what we were going to do we were going to get on the train and we were going to go to Cinque Terre and see the other two villages Um, whereas all the other ports we kind of had an idea of what we wanted to see and where we wanted to go and we could do it on our own we could just get off and have a wander ourselves and plug in your content but you've got a really good video guide on your YouTube as well about how you did that the best way to do it how to get around as well yeah, I'm really glad because I had to suss that out myself and I thought there's not really much out there. So if I do one, then actually that might be useful for other people as well. Yeah, because we didn't do it. When we did it with Virgin, we went to, and I always get this wrong, Marina Carrera, I think it is, which is slightly further down. Um, we couldn't fathom the how to get there. We we looked it up. Bear in mind, once again, we're hungover. So we were hungover again, trying to work out how to get there. And I think by about 11 o'clock, we just went, stay on, him. <laughs> stay on the ship instead. Um, but it's one of the things I do kick myself when I watch your video, just looking at it and going, probably that's the one port of all the ports we did. We should have got off the ship and made the effort. But as we say, we're very blessed. We live a few hours flights away from these ports. So we should, I'm sure we'll be back soon. Brilliant. No, well, thank you, Laura. It's amazing. And, you know, I think Celebrity is an incredible cruise line. And I think you've touched on some of the really amazing reasons why Celebrity is fantastic, especially those Edge series of ships. I think there's something special about them. Um, we definitely hope that you'll come back as well and tell us a little bit more about your time on board Ascent and hopefully Azamara as well. It'd be great to hear from you about those trips as well in the future. Um, but if you guys are ever interested in booking a celebrity cruise, then I would definitely love to help you do that. You can find me anywhere online under magical-traveler.com. Or you can find all my social media under Magical TRBLR. Uh, Sarah, I know you've got a lot of content on your website about all the cruise lines and celebrity as well. Where's the best place that guys can find that? So you can find it on Cruising for All or Cruising with Kids. Same website, different names, but yeah, uh, it's all there. Brilliant. And then Laura, we're definitely going to link your YouTube guides as well into the description below. So if the guys are listening and they want to hunt that down, the best place is to get them in the description. But... Where can the people find your content online as well if they need to? So the best place would be cruiselifestyle.co.uk. From there, you can access uh, the YouTube videos as well, as well as the blog posts. So that's probably the easiest place to find me, cruiselifestyle.co.uk. Awesome. Other than that, guys, we hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.